Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome today. Uh, my name is Dr. Trevor Dyson Hudson, and I'm going to be presenting today on skin care and pressure injuries after spinal cord injury. Uh, a little background about myself. So I'm the director of spinal cord injury research there at Kessler Foundation. And I'm co-director uh, with Dr. Stephen Kirschblum of our Spinal Cord Injury Model System Center at Kessler and Kessler Foundation. Uh, a little bit more background about myself. I have a spinal cord injury uh, myself. I am, uh, my level of my injury is C6, C7. So I'm tetraplegic or quadriplegic, uh, depending what term you like to use. Um, I, you know, I can use my arms, but my hand function is impaired. Uh, I use a manual wheelchair to get around. I drive a car. I've been, it's hard to believe I've been injured 27 years. I was injured as a medical student um, and uh, while playing rugby, I played rugby on the weekends. I tackled somebody the wrong way and I broke my neck. Um, and so uh, I, even though it's been a while, I do remember uh, rehab, my rehab experiences, just how overwhelming it was. Um, and just, you know, how important it is to just keep pushing and uh, make the most of what you have uh, and, uh, and you know, just keep, keep going at it. Um, so as I said, today's presentation is gonna be about skin care and pressure injuries. Something that you know I've had a lot of experience with over the years, a lot of challenges in the beginning uh, that prevented my rehabilitation, interfered with my rehabilitation. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about my story at the end, but uh, why don't we get started? So, um, you know, why do we care about this? Well, up to 80% of people with spinal cord injury will have a pressure injury at some time in their lives. Uh, pressure injuries can cause major problems. Uh, if you have a pressure injury, it may require you to get in bed, to get off your butt. Uh, this can disrupt your life activities. And if you're lying around in bed and not moving, not as active, that can increase your risk for other medical conditions such as pneumonia. You're not taking as deep a breath and you can get infections. Um, if it's a bad pressure injury, it can go all the way down to the muscle and the bone. Uh, this can become infected and can spread throughout the body, through your blood, to your heart. Um, and uh, it can cause all kinds of significant problems related to that. A bad pressure injuries can uh, have high costs associated with them for medical treatment, uh, special equipment you may need, pressure relieving mattresses, surgery if you need it to treat the pressure injury. And of course, there's lost wages and lost time because you're not up and active. You're in bed, either trying to heal up the pressure injury or recover. Um, if a pressure injury becomes infected, it can be life-threatening. People can get sepsis from pressure injuries, you know, uh, an infection that affects their whole body um, that can be very difficult to treat. Um, but the good news is most pressure injuries are preventable. And so that's what I'm going to be talking about today, steps that you can take to prevent these from happening, or if you get one, what you can do to treat it. So what is a pressure injury? Well, I'm going to go into this in a little more detail, but basically it's any injury or damage to the skin or muscle caused by pressure or shear or a combination of the two. You'll often hear terms like pressure ulcer or pressure sore. Those are old, older terms. The newer term is pressure injury, but you know people also call them bed sores or decubitus, skin breakdown. You know all these names refer to the same injury, same thing, which is an injury to the skin or the muscle uh, that's caused by pressure or shear. And what happens is there's a lots of blood flow to the area. And you need, you need blood flow to the skin and the muscle 
to keep it alive and healthy. It brings nutrients and other things. And if the skin muscle don't, don't get blood, then they can die. They can become damaged and, and break down. So what are some of the different ways pressure injuries happen? So, you know, I kind of mentioned pressure. So too much pressure on the skin for too long. So that can either be really high pressure for short periods of time or low pressure for long periods of time. You know, and low pressure for long periods of time can happen if you're sitting or lying too long without shifting your weight. Um, such as, uh, you know, if you're in bed or in your wheelchair. Um, not enough padding. So padding kind of relieves some of that pressure. So you can have high pressure uh, without padding. So the padding relieves some of the pressure and that's why many of you will have a, a special wheelchair cushion uh, or padding in your bed to protect kind of bony areas on your body. Um, so there's, that's pressure. Shearing can also happen. Shearing is when your skin moves one way and bone moves another way. A good example of shearing is if you put your hand on a table or something and slide it back and forth, um, kind of the skin is moving one direction while the bone underneath could be moving another direction. Uh, this can happen if you're slouching in your bed or uh, in your slouch in your wheelchair, I mean, or sitting upright in your bed and you slowly start to slide down. You may notice if you put your bed upright and you're watching TV that after a little while you're sliding down in the bed and you have somebody kind of help you sit upright again. You can have some shearing going on if you, if you keep doing that. So you just have to be careful. Shearing can also happen when you slide during a transfer. So, uh, you know, especially if you're not wearing, if you're naked transferring onto a commode or a shower chair and your skin's not protected uh, and you're dragging it from one surface to another, uh, you could have some shearing that goes on then. Or if you're in bed and you're scooting from one side of the bed to the other, uh, you could have some shearing. So you just wanna be careful uh, to protect your skin when you're doing that. Uh, trauma. Trauma can also cause uh, pressure injuries. Uh, it's not pressure per se, but there's damage to the skin, abrasions and falls. Um, all of those things can damage the skin. Finally, I don't have it listed there, but high heat or cold can damage the skin. You know, uh, you know, you if you have lack of sensation or something, uh, then then you could burn your skin. Um, so just you need to be aware of that. If you're sitting on, a, on a, a seat heater or a hot pack, you just have to be very careful not to burn your skin. So where do pressure injuries happen? Well, they happen in areas where bones are close to the surface. Um, what you'll see is, oh, sorry. You know, these areas, like if you're sitting upright in your wheelchair, uh, your sitting bones or your tailbone. Your sitting bone is called your ischial tuberosity and your tailbone or your lower back is your sacrum and your cossacks. And these are bony areas that are prone to pressure. If you're lying in bed, then areas along either your hip bone or your, or your knees or between your knees or along your ankles can be prone to uh, at risk for getting pressure injuries. So that's why you'll sit on a mattress, lie on a mattress that has some degree of padding in it to help protect these areas. Um, and then if you sleep on your side at night, you'll probably wanna put a pillow between your legs to just keep the bony parts of your um, knees apart just so they're not pressing against each other all night. Likewise, when you lie flat on your back, these are some of the other areas that may be at risk. So your tailbone, back of your shoulder blades, your heads, your heels. And uh, so it's important um, just to, again, I'll go into this in a little more detail, um, 
but the important thing is to know that these are at risk areas. And so you'll just want to keep an eye on them. So why are people with spinal cord injury at risk? Well, before your injury, you, your nerves would send messages of pain or discomfort to your brain. So often, you know, they would let you know that you needed to relieve the pressure. I mean, you didn't think about it. Uh, it was just your brain saying you're uncomfortable. The pressure is building up and you would just shift automatically. You'd fidget, you know. If you think about back to sitting in a hard seat or a chair, you would move around because you'd become uncomfortable after a while. However, after a spinal cord injury, you're not moving as much. Um, this can cause pressure on the skin or muscle to build up. You're, there's also often a loss of sensation. Uh, you, you just don't feel the way your skin, you can't feel the way you used to feel. And as a result, the warning signals aren't getting to your brain to tell you that you're uncomfortable. So the area may feel discomfort, but that signal's not getting to your brain to say, hey, I feel uncomfortable, I've got to move. So it's a combination of those two things that make you put you at risk for developing pressure injuries. So how do you avoid getting these pressure injuries? Well, you if you if you're not getting the signal to fidget, then you need to make a point of fidgeting on your own. And we call these pressure reliefs or weight shifts. I'm going to go into that in more detail in the next slide, um, but just keep that in your mind. Uh, it's important to inspect your skin regularly. Uh, you know, those areas that I pointed out, the bony areas when you're sitting in your wheelchair or lying in bed, it's important to inspect those areas. I generally do it twice a day. So I'll do it in the morning when I'm getting up because I've been lying in bed all night. So I'm inspecting kind of my hip bone because I lie on my side and my knees and my ankles to just see if I have any red marks. Likewise, uh, when I get out of the wheelchair at night and I'm getting undressed, I'm checking my sitting bones and my feet and uh, my, my skin, you know, where my pants were to see if I have any red marks. Uh, make sure seams weren't digging into me uh, or that I wasn't uh, sitting in my wheelchair for too long without doing a pressure relief. So um, inspection is very important. And if you, you can use, it's a little more challenging with my spinal cord injury, but I have a mirror that I use to help me. So I'll hold the mirror and kind of angle it. I also really take advantage of my, my camera on my phone and I'll take pictures of areas uh, so that I can see it better or I'll get assistance from somebody taking a picture of the area so that I can see it. And also it provides a way of documenting it to, to see if the pressure injury is getting better or worse. Um, so that's inspecting skin regularly. Um, another way to avoid pressure injuries is padding and positioning and turning in bed. You know, you're, you're lying in bed for an extended period of time when you sleep. Um, and so, you know, you, that even though you have padding, uh, there is pressure being applied to your skin. So it's important to regularly kind of shift your positioning. Right now, they're coming into your room probably or asking you to turn in bed every two hours you know and I just remember that when I was in the hospital I hated it because I'd just be starting to fall asleep when the nursing staff would come in in the middle of the night to have to reposition me um because I needed assistance it was something I couldn't do on my own and so it's really hard to get a good night's sleep now that I've been injured longer um you know and with practice and other things I I, I don't need to turn as often. And in fact, I can sleep the whole night. So my, my skin has changed a little bit. So, uh, so each individual is going to vary and what they do at night uh, will be different for people. So just keep that in mind. <clears throat> when you're up in your wheelchair, uh, most of you will have a special cushion, a uh, special pressure relieving cushion. Um, and this could be either air cushion or a kind of foam gel cushion mix. Uh, you know, the, 
Yeah, and, and those types of cushions can change over time. I know the cushion I had, wheelchair cushion I had while I was doing my rehab as an inpatient changed and the one I have now is much different. Um, you know, there there is no perfect wheelchair cushion. There may be different types that have pluses and minuses associated with them, pros and cons. So it's just trying to find the one that works best for you. And that can change over time. So, and you'll work with your therapist to identify what works for you. Um, so an important thing to do also is to use care when you transfer. So don't drag your bottom or try to avoid dragging your bottom when you scrape. I mean, when you scrape, I mean, when you transfer, um, you know, try not to drag the skin um, to prevent the shearing. Uh, keep your skin clean and dry. If the skin's wet, it can become vulnerable to breaking down. It's a little more fragile. Uh, so people with spinal cord injury often have bladder or bowel accidents and their clothing can get wet or their sheets can get wet. And if you sit in wet clothing or in, on, on, on wet sheets for too long, your skin can start to become a little more fragile and be more prone to breaking down. So it's important to, to clean up Get, get into dry clothing or change your sheets. Uh, even though it's frustrating and be very discouraging, um, it's important to just take care of that. Um, loose clothing. If you wear tight clothing or shoes, um, the seams or the shoes can dig into your skin. This can cause uh, pressure injuries. I know early on, uh, you know, I had a lot of swelling in my feet. So I had to be careful to, to, to make sure my sneakers weren't tied too tight or were too small and would dig into my, my feet and cause red marks. Likewise with my clothing, uh, sometimes the seams or rivets or buttons on pants can dig into you. So you just need to keep an eye on those. Finally, it's important that you eat well. Um, your skin, like any other part of your body, needs nutrients. And so, and that comes from the food you eat. So it's important to eat a, a diet with enough protein, fruits, and vegetables um, so that you get adequate nutrients. So, you know, I mentioned weight shifts. So this kind of purposeful fidgeting. So, uh, you know, you you, your body, you may not be getting those signals from your brain, body to, to getting to your brain to tell you to move. So you have to move on your own. Um, and these weight shifts are something you should try to do every 20 minutes and hold them for at least 60 seconds. And, uh, you know, the type of weight shift you do will depend on the wheelchair you use. So if you use a power chair, then many of you may have a tilt system where you can kind of recline back. So here you'd be sitting upright and there'd be pressure on your bottom area here and maybe your tailbone lower back area. But uh, you know, every 20 minutes or so, just get in the habit of tilting your chair back. Now you don't have to go the full 65 degrees, as this says, you can 25 to 65 degrees is enough, but just tilt back and that shifts the pressure from directly under your bottom to more under your lower back. And that just is allowing blood flow to other areas. Um, you know, do that for about a minute and then you go back to being upright. People may have a full recline system. It's really just getting in the habit of changing your position. Another way to change your position is just leaning from side to side. You know, this is kind of showing the extreme lean, but you'll see by this person leaning all the way over, they're lifting the weight off that one side. And you can do that by either grabbing the armrest or hooking the push handles, or you can even lean over on a table. Whatever it is, you're trying to shift the weight off that one side. You then would turn around and do it on the other side too. So like I said, it's just you know shifting weight off of various parts of your bottom so as to allow uh, blood flow to those regions. Uh, 
forgive me if my dog starts barking in the background. Uh, just uh, he sometimes does that. So uh, anyway, um, you know, if this is the type of weight shift that I like to do, this one in the lower right corner, uh, where you lean all the way forward. This is a nice type of weight shift as it kind of shifts the weight off the rear part of your bottom and uh, puts it more on your thighs. You just have to be careful not to lean too far forward and make sure that your wheels are positioned properly. Uh, this is with the casters kind of going as if you were going backwards in your wheelchair. Uh, this kind of widens the wheelbase. This way you don't put too much weight on your front foot plate and actually flip yourself over in your wheelchair. I've done that before. So you just wanna make sure and I have actually found that you don't have to lean this far forward. Uh, you really can't see me that well, but generally what I'll do is I even, if you can see, I just kind of lean forward onto my arms, onto my elbows in my wheelchair. And that I find shifts enough weight off the backside of my bottom to give me a weight shift. And it's a way to do a subtle weight shift um, without, you know, having to do like full on lean forward or tilt all the way back. But you should uh, discuss this with your therapist to try to identify uh, the best type of weight shift for you. They can sometimes do something called pressure mapping where they can put a special mat under your, between your butt and your wheelchair cushion and put it up on the computer screen so you can see where the pressure is when you sit and how that changes when you shift your weight. So, and that's called pressure mapping. Um, and it's something your therapist may be able to do with you. I know I found it very useful for myself. Um, so, and as, as I said, you know, you wanna do these weight shifts every 20 minutes or so, um, just, you know, to get blood flow to the areas and then try to hold it for 60 seconds, you know, cause you wanna allow enough time for blood to flow to the area. So um, now one type of weight shift that I didn't mention, but some people do is called a push up or press up weight shift. And that's when you, and I don't have a picture there, but that's when you actually grab a hold of the wheel and push straight up. Um, that lifts your butt completely up off of the cushion. You have to be pretty strong to do that because you're lifting the weight straight up. It's like doing kind of a push up or a dip. Um, the trouble is, you know, if you do that every 20 minutes and hold it for 60 seconds, that puts a lot of strain on your shoulder as you're just holding all your body weight up for 60 seconds. And if you do that 20 minutes every day of every day of the week for every week and so on, uh, this can lead to overuse injuries. And so we, we discourage people from doing that one, at least or doing that one as the primary weight shift. There's nothing wrong with occasionally doing it. Uh, however, you don't want to do that all the time. So, so what can you, so how can you tell if you're getting a pressure injury? So, you know, first thing first is to, see what understand what your skin get used to what your skin looks like when it's normal healthy um and then uh and so you know if you have healthy skin or light skin or dark skin just get a sense of what it looks like normally um and uh we say a pressure injury has started to happen if there's what you'll see is kind of a red or darkened area um, and a pressure injury has begun if that reddened or darkened area is still there 10 to 30 minutes after you remove the pressure. So if you think about it, so, you know, if you take your palm and push it against your forehead for long enough, um, you'll get a red mark. Um, and, but if you remove your palm, that red mark will fade away after a few minutes. Um, if that red mark doesn't fade after 30 minutes, then that's a sign you may have some damage to the skin. 
And so that, that's what you're looking for. So when you are getting up in the morning or going to bed at night and you're inspecting your skin, you're looking for those reddened areas. And then, you know, so if you saw it at night, um, as you got out of your wheelchair, you would just want to make sure that in the morning when you got up, before you got into the wheelchair, that that reddened area had faded away, or if it was still there, then you may need to do something about it. So um, again, get used to seeing what your skin looks like normally so that you can identify when something abnormal is going on. So, you know, if when the skin becomes reddened and it doesn't lighten after 30 minutes, we call this a stage one pressure injury. And this is kind of the early stages of a pressure injury. You know, for somebody with light skin, uh, it'll be a little easier to see as a red spot. You know, if you have dark skin, it might just show up as a slightly darker spot. So um, just, you know, pay special attention. And again, um, this is an injury if after 30 minutes, uh, the redness or the, the darkening doesn't fade or go away. If you see this, uh, the important thing is to stay off that area. So identify what caused it. Uh, was it because you were sitting in your wheelchair for too long without doing weight shifts? Is there not enough air in your cushion or not enough gel to give you support? Or is there, are you sitting on something that was poking into you? Are your pants uh, digging into you? Are the seams or buttons digging into you? And often by just removing that pressure, um, identifying what the problem, uh, that pressure injury will go away. Um, sometimes it's very simple and it's just altering things and it should go away within a day or two. Um, if it doesn't, then you should reach out to your healthcare provider because uh, you may have something worse. Um, and a worse type of pressure injury is what's called a stage two pressure injury. And that's when the skin actually becomes broken. Uh, you know, no longer is the skin intact, uh, but you start to have an open sore. And the sore extends just kind of into just down uh, a little bit into uh, the next layer. It's not very deep. Um, there may be some drainage associated with uh if you have a pressure injury like this, obviously, it's very important to get off of it. Uh, you may need to put a pressure, some sort of a dressing on it, but you will want to talk to your healthcare provider to uh, identify the best way to take care of that. Because these can take sometimes just a couple of days, but they may take weeks to heal up. So uh, you definitely don't want uh, to have something like this. And if this gets worse, you can get something called the stage three pressure injury. This is when uh, the injury extends all the way down into the fat. Um, it doesn't go all the way down into the bone or the muscle, um, but it's still pretty deep. And you could start to see a lot of drainage with these. Um, again, important to get off of this, try to identify what's causing it, but uh, contact your healthcare provider right away because you may need a special wound care for this. There are special types of dressings to, to help with these types of pressure injuries. Um, you may need a special mattress uh, or other uh, thing for your bed. So again, uh, important to get in touch with your healthcare provider just so that they can help you try to treat this. Um, these types of pressure injuries take, may take months to heal. So uh, skin, unfortunately, heals at a very slow rate. It's not like you can just heal something like this over a couple of days. So it's important that you identify and uh, get in touch with your health care provider as soon as possible. Now, if this gets worse, you can get something called a stage four pressure injury. And that's when it goes all the way down to the bone, uh, through the muscle down into the bone. And sometimes there can even be a little infection there. The wound can become infected or the bone can become infected. Um, it's really important you see your healthcare provider right away if you have a stage four pressure injury. Uh, surgery will often be required with these types of injuries. So um, 
because they just take a long time to heal on their own. Uh, I'm speaking from personal experience that I'll tell you later. Um, I, I had something like this, tried to heal it, and it just did not heal very well. So sometimes you need to do surgery. And um, so again, important to discuss with your healthcare provider. Some other types of pressure injuries that you may see are, you know, deep, whoop, are deep uh, tissue pressure injuries. So this shows up as a, a dark bruise on your skin. And in fact, this is, I'm dealing with something right now like this on my heel. Um, it looks like a, a simple bruise or blister, but there actually is damage that goes deeper than that. Um, it may actually go all the way down to here. What you're seeing on the surface may only be kind of the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. Um, there much, may be much more damage down below. And so the damage may have already been done and this may get worse before it gets better. And it's not because you're doing something wrong. It's just, as I said, the damage was done. And so um, it's just gonna take time for all of this damaged tissue to, to heal. And so what you may see is you may see this start to open up because this is all dead or dying. And so this wound may open up and uh, before it can start to, to heal on its own. So again, uh, if you see that happening, uh, contact your healthcare provider right away. Uh, another type of pressure injury that makes it hard to, to know what you have is one that has like a scab on the surface or some other kind of just junk there. You can't really see the full extent of the injury. It's not until you remove this scab that you see how deep the pressure injury goes. So, you know, if you have something like this that isn't healing on its own, you definitely should reach out to your healthcare provider because they may need to work with you to help clean this wound out and to, and to help allow healthy tissue uh, to be exposed so that it will heal on its own. So, you know, I, I know this can all be pretty overwhelming. I mean, I covered a lot of different things as they relate to your skin, but uh, just some of the take home measure, um, take home points from this. Um, pressure injuries are common in people with spinal cord injury. It's important that you just be aware of that. Uh, they can re uh, result in prolonged bed rest to heal and can lead to other medical complications. Um, they can even be life-threatening if they get really bad. The good news is they are preventable. So by taking the steps that I outline in terms of having a proper wheelchair cushion, using proper padding in your bed, uh, doing weight shifts regularly, inspecting your skin regularly, you can prevent these types of things from happening or when they happen, prevent them from getting worse. You know, it's one thing that I've learned over time is that, you know, you have control, I have control. So by doing some of those things, I can prevent, uh, you can prevent pressure injuries from happening. And me too, because I have a spinal cord injury myself. So, um, you know, there's some resources, other resources, if you want to learn more about this topic. Um, yes, You Can is a publication by Paralyzed Veterans of America. Um, this is the hardbound uh, book version. Um, we're ordering some. Uh, normally, we would give them out to people, but we've run out. We've ordered some. But uh, in the meantime, you can access this publication online on the PVA website. Um, if you just Google Paralyzed Veterans of America, and, uh, and if you go to their website under... Um, publications and there's you'll see a list of a bunch of different resources for people with spinal cord injury and you'll see the yes you can uh, manual listed there and there's a chapters on a lot of different things um, pressure injuries bowel management bladder management all these different areas so it's it's a great resource that you can download either onto your phone or your tablet. There's also a PVA app so that you can access those publications on their website. 
So there's a number of ways to see those things. Um, the Model Systems Knowledge Translation Center is another great resource. Um, they have all kinds of uh, literature on different medical complications after spinal cord injury, including uh, public, you know, flyers and handouts on the topic of skin care and pressure injury prevention. Uh, I believe Jane will be giving you copies of these um, at some point this week. So, uh, as well as, you know, uh, ones on other topics. So uh, you can also access these on the website, the, the msktc.org website. And not only can you access these uh, flyers, you know, in online versions, but there's a bunch of other resources on that website and videos and other things directed towards people and family members of those with spinal cord injury. So it's a great resource. Um, United Spinal Association is another great resource. Um, this is a, it's a free organization. You can join for free if you just go to their website and register and uh, you'll have access to online publications. Um, if you register and uh, join, they'll actually mail you a magazine called New Mobility. It's a monthly magazine that comes out. Covers, it's really nice magazine. I mean, it's high production value. Um, great pictures and great stories. Um, articles on accessibility, modifying homes, uh, accessible travel, returning to work, sexuality, equipment, you know, wheelchairs, uh, advertisements on different types of uh, equipment to help you do things in your daily life. So it is a, a great resource. So I highly encourage you to join. As I said, it's free, so it's hard to beat that. Um, and uh, finally, uh, we do have a, a DVD uh, that, and also a YouTube channel that has a chapter on pressure injury prevention. So if you want to learn more, see some videos on the topic, I encourage you to go to our YouTube channel. Just Google uh, Kessler Foundation, uh, YouTube, and pressure injury or pressure sore. And uh, you, it should take you to the website and videos there. And the link is below, but it's a, it's a little convoluted to, to write that down. Um, are there any questions from the group? I know I've covered a lot during this time. So uh, as I said, this can be kind of overwhelming for people. Um, but, you know, I'm happy to answer any questions people have. Um, a little background story of me, you know, as I said, I have a spinal cord injury myself. Um, and I, I had a lot of problems with pressure injuries in the beginning after my injury, um, certainly during my, my rehabilitation, I uh, would, you know, I had a pressure injury that kept me from uh, being, you know, doing therapy. And so, uh, you know, I would have to get in bed for a while. And then, uh, you know, that meant I couldn't do therapy that day. Uh, when I was back, I went back to medical school. Um, I started having some issues with my skin. And rather than take care of it right away, I just kept pushing it. You know, and part of it was I was angry. I was frustrated. I was like, you know, I'm trying to get back on with my life. I'll be damned if I'm going to let my skin get in the way of me getting back on with my life. Um, and as a result, I I wasn't very smart and I kept pushing it. I didn't try to figure out what was causing the skin breakdown. And I was putting in long hours being back in the hospital, uh, working as, you know, as a medical student, uh, long hours up in my wheelchair. And so by the time that I had finished that rotation, I had a stage four pressure injury that went all the way down to the bone. And, uh, you know, I should have known better. I should have then gone to see my doctor. But instead, I was like, well, you know what? I'm just going to heal this up this month. And get, so I'm going to get in bed, get out of my wheelchair and try to heal it up. 
But in doing that, I started getting pressure injuries elsewhere on my body because I was now lying in bed for extended periods of time. So after a few months of doing that and realizing I was getting nowhere and in fact causing more problems, I finally went and saw a doctor. Um, and it was at that point that uh, the, you know I realized that the only way I was going to heal those is through surgery. And so that was very discouraging at the time, but I think it was one of the best things I did because it allowed me, you know, it's basically stopping down, going down this path that I had started. There was no way I was going to heal them on my own. Uh, and the surgery just allowed them to, to do healthy tissue in the area. Plus it allowed me to work with a therapist to identify a better wheelchair cushion for me and to work on my wheelchairs. And I was just also at a better point in my life where I was ready to kind of be more proactive about doing things. So, um, so anyway, and now that I've, you know, having that experience, I've been pretty lucky, knock on wood, you know, I really haven't had pressure injuries um, to that extent uh, going forward. And also, you know, I would say, you know, I have had some issues, some skin breakdown because my pants stick into me or some other thing, but I, I identify it early and I'm able to do something about it to prevent it from getting out of control. So again, um, that's the key takeaway is that, you know, you, you can have control over these, so they don't have to take over your life. Jamil, do you, you have your own experience, right? Yes, yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Jamil Williams. I'm a spinal cord injury research assistant here at the foundation, Kessler Foundation. And I also have a spinal cord injury. I'm coming up on my 19th year with this uh, spinal cord injury. I've developed a pressure sore early on, I would say within the first two weeks of my injury back in 2002. Uh, my eyes happened with, you know, a, a bedpan was left underneath me while I was uh, admitted into the hospital. I had lack of sensation, but I still had some kind of feeling, but I didn't have, it was pretty much diminished back, you know, my backside. And by the time they found it, had it been a few centimeters deeper, I would have needed skin flap surgery myself, but I didn't, I moved forward. Uh, you know, I had my mom, everyone around at the hospital here at the Kessler campus, as well as my mom and sister, nursed me back to good health once I was uh, discharged. And it took, I would say, at least four months for, for it to completely heal. You know, so I would definitely just be aware of, of your skin because with everything that we're going through, you do not want to let that get in the way of, of your progress, you know. And yeah, as Trevor said, you know, speak with the, the, uh, the wheelchair clinic, check on what what uh, cushion may be best for you, for your situation. Everybody's different. And, and yeah, just, just check it as much as you can. Check your body for any pressure sores or any, any little marks that's, that's not normal. You know, just try to stay on top of it and, and it'll help out. Trust me. Great, well, thanks Jamil. Yeah. And uh, so uh, I wanna thank you all um, uh, for joining us today. And uh, you know, and uh, I will see you around. Take care.